All right, here's the rest of section 2.2 that some of you didn't um, really get because of the snow day. So let's look at this. Um, so one thing we talked about is median. So remember in the past we've talked about mean already, which is like the average, like still from the rich give to the poor. Median is truly the middle, like the median of a road. So if you have, you know, numbers, you would put them in order. So say you have something like... Oh, something like that. You would put them in order and then you would take the middle one. And so what a median tells you is like half are below four and half are above four. Um, sometimes your median is not pretty because you don't have a odd number. So sometimes you have something like two, two, seven, and eight. And so your middle is somewhere here. So if that happens, you put them in order and you find the middle of the middle. So you actually have to average those guys. So you're going to put them together. Um, half of 9 is 4.5. So your median is 4.5. So again, half your scores are below 4.5, half are above. And sometimes the median is actually better than the mean. Um, so for example, say we have salaries of African-American college educated graduates um, in Chicago. And so I randomly asked their salary and you know, one makes 50,000 and another makes 60,000 and then say another one makes 100,000 and then another one makes, oh, I don't know, 31 million, okay? And so obviously that 31 million, if I average, if I steal from the rich and give to the poor, it's gonna look like all these college educated African women in Chicago are making a boatload of money. Um, but the reality is this is Oprah's yearly salary, probably give or take, it might be more, who knows. And so having Oprah accidentally randomly getting in my sample is gonna really mess up my data. So instead, what I can do is if I put them in order, I can find the median, right? So if I add those together and divide by two, um, 80,000, or you can just tell that 80,000 is the middle, then the median salary is actually more useful because it's telling me half the people, half the people in my sample made less than 80,000 a year, half made more. All right, so let's look at some problems in the book quick. Um, so go ahead on page 168, um, go ahead and look at problem number four, and I'm just going to kind of erase this here. Um, so go ahead and just pause and do that problem, and then I'll go over it. All right. Okay, so hopefully you paused and you're looking at that. So on that problem, you have 18, 22, 25, 24, and what, 19, 20, 19 and 17. And so what they want to do is the mean. So you're just going to add them all up or steal from the rich, give to the poor and divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So go ahead and find the mean. And then the median, you would want to put these in order. So we have what? Someone who's 17, 18, um, what? Two 19s, a 20, a 22. 24 and 25. So there were eight numbers. So right here would be my median in the middle of those two. So you can either add and divide by two, or in this case, you can hopefully just look and say it's 19.5. 19, 19 so the median is 19.5. And if you add those up and divide, you should get a mean of 20.5. So you might want to, you know, check that out and see. So, I mean, not a huge difference in the how old it is versus mean versus median. All right, then the question says, add a 55-year-old. Okay, so if I add a 55-year-old to the mix, all right, so now here's my new data set. All right, so I'm going to have to add them up. Now I have to divide by 9, because if you add those all up, now we have 9 people. And hopefully if you add those up and divide, you get 24.3 years. Which, if you look at the data, we only have, what, two people over that age. So for that to be the average, that doesn't really seem super accurate because it's like, well, only two people are really older than that. Everyone else is younger. So this outlayer kind of is messing with your mean a little bit. But if you look at the new median, okay, I now have nine numbers. So one, two, three, four, five. This would be the true middle. 
right? And so half the people are younger than that and half are older. This is not as impacted from the outlier. So sometimes we like median a little bit better than mean. All right, why don't you flip the page? All right, number five. Again, you might want to pause it and do this one quick. Um, and then turn it back on and we'll get going. Okay, so our number five, they want the mean. So what you need to do, you have that chart and there's how many values in there? 20. You need to add up all those nurses' salaries. So you need to add up all the data in that chart. And then you're going to end up dividing by 20 because there's 20 numbers. So you're going to get some total and you add it all up and you're going to divide by 20 nurses. And you should get an average of 57,580. If not, you might want to re-add and re-divide and see what you end up getting. All right, for part B, it says, what is a median? Now, if you look, they were nice and put it in order. So here's the lowest. So one, two, three, four, five. And then they come over here and go six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now there's 20. Is there 20 of them? Yeah, there's 20 of them. So are you okay that um, there's 10 below and then there's 10 above? So my median is in that halfway spark. So that is between what, 51,000? And what would we have? 54,000. So you want to average those because there's 10 below, 10 above. What is the median? So if you add those up, divide by 2, the median is 52,5. Right. The next question, C, which is higher, the mean or the median? All right. So definitely it looks like our mean is the higher of the two. Okay. And why is that? Well, if you kind of look down here, We've got a couple pretty high salaries that are maybe um, skewing our data. All right, so if nurses want to make a case for raising salaries, which one are they going to use? Well, if you look at the median, it's a little lower. So if I was trying to say, hey, I need a raise, I'm going to use the median, not the mean. All right, and most likely, I'm guessing these people could be like nurse administrators, so they might be doing more administrative type roles. All right, E, what is the most common salary? Um, so if you look up here at the top of your chart, the most common salary is what? 31,200. That is what we call the mode. So the most popular or the most frequent is the mode. And sometimes you can have a tie. So you could have like three that are the same and another three that are the same. And so then it'd be bimodal. But here we just have one set of three. Now, why is that? Well, it could be that these are people just out of school, so they don't have a lot of experience, um, or maybe they have just three people that have maybe just a lower educational degree as far as nursing goes, so they're just starting out and maybe they have, a, you know, something less than maybe a BSN or something like that. All right, and then F, it's like, okay, it is kind of a pain to add all the data. All right, so if you wanted to, is everyone okay to make life a little easier? You could add like this column up, get an answer, this column, get an answer, this column, get an answer, this column, get an answer, that column, get an answer. And then you can add up all your answers to that. But again, you'd still have to divide by 20 because there's still 20 salaries. But you could take just a little chunk at a time so that you're not adding so many numbers. That might be helpful. All right. Okay, you might want to go ahead and read number six and again, pause and see if you can do... GPA, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so let me erase a little bit, and then we will go back and do the GPA problem. Now again, remember GPAs are weighted grades, so they're no different than a percent that a teacher does weighted grades. It's just the weight is how many credit hours it is, and then obviously the grade, we use the scale to figure that out. So if you look at example six, this person has, what, a three credit in English, six credits, five credits, and three. And again, it is weighted grade. And so when you weight something, like, you make it heavier. So we are going to weight these things. Now, a C, so an A is a 4.0, B. All right, and so let's look at these. So they got a C in English, so that would be a 2. They got a D in math, so that's a 1. They got a B in bio, so that is 3. And in, 
what is that? I don't know, maybe physics, maybe 121, something like that. They got a C, so a 2. So again, the first thing you do is you weight them. So you multiply straight across the chart. And then you add it all up. So what is that? 12, 18, is that 33? Let's see, that'd be 22. Oh, did I add wrong? Let's see, there's 12, 27. Yep, I think 33 is okay. All right, and then this is what we would call grade points or quality points at some colleges. But again, we have to divide by how many credit hours because we want to average it over our credit hours. So this is what, 9, 10, 11, 12. What do they have, 17 credits? Let me double check. Um, 8, 14 looks like it. So you are going to divide by 17 credits, right? And you should end up getting that this person has a GPA of 1.94. All right, so then on the top of page 171, they get their act a little bit together. So again, you might want to pause, see if you can do this on your own before, you know, me doing it. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Um, now they have a three credit, and again, these are weighted. Great, so you always make the chart, and it's always weighted. All right, so three credit, three credit, five credit, and three credit. All right, now in English, they got a C. So again, if you need to look up here, C is a two. All right, and then they got another C in math. They got a two. Chemistry, they got a B, which is a three. And sociology, they got a C, which is a two. So um, improving, maybe, we'll see. So we got six, six, 15 and six. Okay, so that's how they're going forward here. And then what is that? 15 and 18 is what? 33 again? All right, so they have 33 grade points again. Um, but again, we want grade point average, right? So how many credit hours did they take? So it looks like maybe they took a little less. So again, you always divide by the 14 credits or however many credits they took, 17, to get what we would call the grade point average. So if you divided that, they would get a 2.36, which is better. Okay, now the next thing we want to figure out is a cumulative. Now to do the cumulative, you can't average these because you're not comparing apples to apples. They took 17 credits here. They only took 14 here. So you can't average them. So what you kind of need to do is make one big chart. So you'd make a big chart of all the weighted grades from both semesters combined. So if you look, once when you got to the bottom of that chart, you'd add it up. Well, you kind of know what that is already. Um, they had 33 when this was all added up and 33 when that was all added up. So when you add up all this big chart, it still should add up to 66 grade points. And then when you add up all the credit hours, that should be the total of the 17 credit hours and 14 here. So what is that? Is that 31? So 31 credits. So again, you cannot average those. You actually have to do them separate. So if you divide that, they should have, what, a 2.13. So that's their, what, cumulative? So this helped bring their GPA up a little bit, but not, you know, as much as maybe they would have liked. All right, why don't you pause and try the next one? All right, let me erase this quick and then we'll talk about this one. All right, so we're looking at fall semester. So it looks like they got their act together. So again, weighted, great. Okay, so this would be, again, the same way we do weighted grades. We're just doing a GPA here. So the weight is a three credit class, three credit class, four credit class, three credit class. Now let's see, history, they got an A, so that's a four. Uh, math, they got an A, so that's a 4. And then they got a B in Chem, 3. And then they got an A in Bio, which is a 4. So you can see they're kind of getting their act together, which is good. So you have 12, 12, 12, and then 12. All right. So if you add that all up, they have 48. And again, those are grade points. You still have to average it. And again, you average it by the total of this column. So they took 13 credits this semester. So divide by 13 credit hours. And so again, a grade point average is your grade in a one credit class. All right, so if you divide this, they actually got a 3.69, which is an awesome GPA. 
All right, so they finally got their act together, which is 